Hi everyone, this is Dr. G. Saiti Datar, Team MDS Konku. So we have discussed few number of cases in the part one. We'll be discussing few more cases now. Okay, so coming to the first one. So here a male infant is presented with asymptomatic erythematous discumative lesions in the hands and feet which were noticed at birth and he was born to a 35 year old mother who had a poor prenatal care because of socioeconomic reasons and there was a diffuse erythematous transgradient palma plantar keratoderma with discomation and fissures as you can see in the picture. So what are the other findings that you can expect in this baby during the later stage of the disease? So here if you see first let's conclude what exactly the disease could be so as per the findings that is being given so it is nothing but congenital syphilis okay so what are the other findings that you can expect now so first yes dwarfed molars with cusps covered with globular enamel growths which is nothing but the mulberry molars right yes even that can be seen which is a part of the Hutchinson's triad, right? Next, a scapula in which the vertebral broader below the spine presents concavity instead of convexity. Yes, so this is called as scaphoid scapulae. Okay, yes, even this can be seen. Next, eighth cranial nerve deafness. Yes, it's also one of the constraint of the Hutchinson's triad. Even that can be seen. Next, anterior bowing of the middle portion of the tibia. Even yes, this can be seen. It's nothing but the shaber shin. Okay, so even this can be observed as a skeletal change in the patient. The thickening of the sternoclavicular clavicular portion of the clavicle. Yes, this is nothing but the higo minakis sign even this can be seen in this child in a later stage so yes the answer is all the above so all these signs or all these other features related to the congenital syphilis so which can be seen in this infant okay so what are the features which has been listed out in this table so do go through all the features that have been listed out so facial features like the frontal bossing saddle nose short maxilla and protuberant mandible ophthalmic features like the interstitial keratitis secondary glaucoma chorio retinitis, corneal scarring and optic atrophy, ears showing the hearing loss, oropharynx with Hutchinson's teeth and mulberry molars, cutaneous like the ragades, CNS like the intellectual disability, arrested hydrocephalus, seizures, optic atrophy, okay and very importantly the skeletal changes. So first one, Shebershin which is nothing but the anterior bowing of the tibia, Higominakis sign wherein there is enlargement of the sternoclavicular portion of the clavicle, Clutton's joint wherein there will be painless arthritis and scaphoid scapulae. So all these are the very important features which you need to know regarding the congenital syphilis. So if you see this is a pictorial presentation. So this is being the scaphoid scapulae. Here you can see the frontal bossing in the saddle nose. And this is being the higominaki sign wherein you can see the irregular thickening of the clavicle, the sternoclavicular portion of the clavicle. And yes, here you can see the bowing of the tibia, the anterior bowing of the tibia. So which is nothing but the Shaber shin. So all these are the important skeletal or the important features related to the congenital syphilis which you need to know. Next. Question, the following picture reveals an anomaly which is related to the development of tooth and this anomaly occurs due to interruption of which of the following stage of the development. So here if you see there is a tooth within tooth appearance and it is seen involving the lateral incisor. So this would have occurred because of a disturbance in the cap stage of the tooth development. So answer is pretty clear. It is dense invaginitis which shows tooth within tooth appearance and it is seen commonly with the lateral incisor. So if you see the stages of tooth development, we are very well aware of it. So the placard stage is a bud stage, okay, wherein there will be like a bud in the bud stage. And here the main process is the proliferation. Okay, whereas in the cap stage, the process which take a main role is the proliferation, differentiation and morphogenesis. Okay. So these are the three main processes which occur in the cap stage. So if there is a disturbance in the development of tooth like dense in denti, gemination like that. So these would have occurred because of the disturbance in the PDM that is proliferation, differentiation or morphogenesis that would have occurred at the cap stage that occurs at the cap stage. So if there is an interruption at the cap stage, then the dense invaginitis occurs. Okay, so answer for this question is the cap stage. Next is the bell stage. Okay, so we know the bell stage. So these are the stages of the tooth development. So 
mainly remember the PDM occurs at the cap stage and if there is a differentiation in or if there is a disturbance then obviously there is problem or there is a disturbance like the gemination or other disturbances like the dense invaginators whereas microdontia, macrodontia if there is such developmental disturbance then that would have occurred at the bell stage. Okay, So this is regarding this particular question. Now next here there is a 45 year old female who has presented with multiple or numerous raised solid lesions over the neck, axilla and crown and forehead since 4 years and she was born with an extra digit on the right hand and on the left foot okay the former got amputated surgically two decades back and she also underwent subtotal thyroidectomy very important to underline for multinodular goiter two years ago and physical examination has shown pallor macrocephaly syndactyly and polydactyly okay so this is again important and dermatological lesions if you see there is multiple forehead papules skin tags over the neck axilla and the groin and there is a cervical scar of thyroidectomy with and also there is a cobblestone tongue with cloist papules okay so what is the inheritance of your diagnosis so first let's decide what is the diagnosis here so if you see there are multiple squamous papillomas right and also the papillomas are seen as well as on the tongue as described in the question so it is nothing but the cowden syndrome the syndrome which is associated with multiple papillomas is nothing but the cowden syndrome and that is autosomal dominant okay so these are the important features of the cowden syndrome so the mucocutaneous manifestations include the trichelomomas papillomatous papules and acryl keratosis okay so 99% all these are very important manifestation besides that in the breast lesions the patient will have carcinoma like adenocarcinoma and also the patients will have macrocephaly and thyroid abnormalities so here in the our patient the patient is having multinodular goiter for which she has underwent thyroidectomy right so this is being given in the question and also the other symptoms like the gastrointestinal lesions and genitourinary urinary abnormalities so all these are the important features related to the cowden syndrome so in our particular patient there are multiple papillomas there is multinodular goiter so which goes in favor of cowden syndrome which is autosomal dominant okay so these are the criteria that is being given so the pathognomic criteria there should be six or more facial papules okay and along with oral mucosa papillomatosis so here even the cobblestone appearance of the tongue says that the oral mucosa is also involved and there should be acryl keratosis and palma plantar keratosis so this is a pathognomic criteria besides that breast cancer thyroid cancer macrocephaly okay endometrium cancer and hermity ductus disease so which is nothing but the dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma so that is nothing but hermetis ductus disease which is different from the hermetis sign okay so the hermetis ductus disease is dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma okay whereas hermetis sign is a shock like sensation which is seen in patients with multiple sclerosis on the flexion of the neck okay so this is regarding the criteria important for the cowden syndrome so just note it down and the other minor criteria just give a glance okay so yes uh, the next question and 34 year old man had a non-healing oral ulcer on his left inner commissure and left labial vestibule the ulcers were roughly oval in shape with irregular crescentic borders and the edges were thin and undermined with slight induration at the base and tenderness was also elicited on palpation here the key point is undermined edges underline that and there was no history of cough or fever or hematosis and weight loss and on smear examination of the ulcer acid fast bacilli were identified using a jail nielsen stain so here undermined edges acid fast bacilli so it's a direct question so it is nothing but the tuberculous ulcer so it can't be squamous cell carcinoma it can't be fungal ulcer and it uh, even it cannot be hepatic ulcer because the smear has given a pretty clear acid fast bacilli and also the edges are undermined which goes in favor of tuberculous ulcer without pulmonary involvement why because the patient is not having any symptoms related to the pulmonary involvement like cough or hemoptoises and other symptoms like fever right so it's better you go for tuberculosis also without pulmonary involvement okay so next question a 15 year old male patient was being admitted to the hospital having experienced repeated fractures 
over a period of three years and the clinical signs and radiographic features has shown recurrent fractures blue sclera with low bone mineral density bluish sclera of the eyes was observed okay so there was no hearing loss again and which of the following collagen is affected in this condition so it's again a direct question so blue is clear of the eyes repeated fractures low density or mineral density of the bone you can go for osteogenesis imperfecta where the type 1 collagen is being affected okay so answer is type 1 okay so this is regarding few more case based discussions i hope you have got an idea of how to answer in your exam okay thank you